Hello and welcome to uh, not so sunny Brisbane, Australia. Uh, today what I'm going to take you through is uh, basically my experiences over the last 12 months with MPP Solar. Uh, 12 months ago I bought two products from MPP Solar. They're PCM 5048s which are solar charge controllers, maximum power point tracking solar charge controllers and uh, I bought two of those and uh, a PIP 4048 HS combined solar charge controller at 4 kilowatt inverter. Um, in Australia that's currently being retailed by a company called uh, Giant Power Systems uh, as the I, they're calling it the IPS, Integrated Power System. Uh, <clears throat> the reason that I purchased these was uh, we had, my company had a need to uh, potentially deploy a lot of solar charge controllers, we're talking about hundreds. Um, yeah, in remote areas, so I wanted to actually test it very, very well before I deployed. Um, so I've been testing it in my own house, with my own solar system. Uh, there's going to be three videos here. The first is my experiences and impressions with the BCM 5048, that's this video. The second video will be my experiences and impressions with the PIP 4048, that's the uh, IPS inverter. Um, and the third video will be about my impressions uh, of uh, MPP Solar's customer service, recent impressions. Um, <clears throat> my system that I've been testing it on uses AGM batteries. Uh, they're in a 48 volt configuration, um, 380 amp hours in total, so that's around about 18 kilowatt hours. Okay, getting into the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, basically what I've found, having these charge controllers set up in my office, for 12 months uh, is that under certain conditions they will quite dramatically overshoot their set points. Those certain conditions are uh, over 90% state of charge so usually when you're in the absorbed stage or, or late into float or into float as well um, and two things will happen. Sometimes that over voltage will occur for between 15 and two, 15 seconds and two minutes. Um, that's the sheer majority of the time. But under certain conditions, I've also caught them sitting at 62.7 volts for a very prolonged period of time. Uh, I.e., I found my batteries fizzing like a, a coke can and extremely hot. Um, I know this has been for at least 10 minutes. Could have been for hours. I'll never know. Um, because the data logger is on the inverter and that's always happened when the inverter has actually been out of service. Okay, <clears throat> what happens when it occurs? Well, the problem is that the inverter has a cut off at 60 volts. So uh, it's rather inconvenient. You come home uh, and your fridges will be off. And the other thing that happens obviously is being sealed batteries, AGM batteries do not like over voltage. When they lose their water, it's gone forever. You can't just top it up. So these over voltages is not good. Um, <clears throat> over that year we've spent probably, uh, I literally have sent hundreds of emails back and forth between MPB Solar's um, tech guy Eric and myself troubleshooting this and being really constructive and, and working through it and as a result of that they've made a change to the controller but in my experience it hasn't fixed the problem. Um, <clears throat> Eric's take on this is that it's ripple voltage. Uh, ripple voltage is a very, look it up, it's in the description. Ripple voltage is a very, very high frequency um, oscillation essentially in the voltage. Um, throughout the system, um, the charge controllers, the inverters, they all create ripple. And what they've got on the back end of uh, where, where the MOSFETs are, they've got uh, filtering capacitors that try and eliminate that ripple. Uh, basically, there's two modes that the ripple is caused by. Uh, the first and most common one is uh, the MOSFETs opening and closing, they actually create ripple. The other thing is, um, under certain circumstances, uh, the PID controller will overcorrect, undercorrect, overcorrect, undercorrect, and under certain situations, if you have an impulse, i.e., uh, clouds coming over and then going, uh, massive increase in solar energy. Uh, the charge controller tries to compensate by pulling down the power point, it then overcompensates, you go below the set point, then it goes over the set point, under, over, and eventually it should get back to the middle. But sometimes what we're seeing is that uh, 
those impulses trigger a really, really strong oscillation in the voltage and that the charge controllers will lose control. More of that later. That's when you get the dangerous situation where it's sitting at 62.7 volts for a prolonged period of time. Um, Eric's asked me to change the PID controller settings, which I've done. Uh, we've spent hours and hours and hours working through different settings on the PID controller and it has been unsuccessful at eliminating this problem. Um, the other thing is send it in we'll fix it. I've sent them in uh, at my own expense a number of times now and it hasn't worked. Um, <clears throat> Eric's also said it's Ripple and it's kind of implied that it's caused by the batteries. Uh, uh, so get more batteries. So I did. I bought another four batteries at the cost of a thousand dollars. My existing battery capacity, 18 kilowatts, is not a small amount of batteries, but I bought extra. Made no difference. What I actually think is happening here, uh, I agree with Eric that it's due to ripple. Well, what causes ripple? I went through that a bit before. Uh, positive feedback from an impulse, uh, the action of the MOSFETs. Uh, to understand why this might be affecting AGMs and not lead acids, uh, I guess you need to understand a little bit, of, bit about the properties of AGM batteries. They've got a very low internal resistance, that's why you can charge them at a higher rate and discharge them at a higher rate than a normal lead acid. Um, one characteristic that they do have though that's not such a problem with lead acids is when they get past 90% state of charge, uh, their internal resistance goes up dramatically. So batteries can act like a capacitor and I think that's where Eric's going when he says get more batteries because um, he's hoping that the batteries will filter out the ripple current. Um, but using a battery as a capacitor is not a good idea. Basically I believe what's happening is as they reach that very high internal resistance they're not acting like a capacitor anymore. Uh, any filtering ability that they had is gone. So it's all down to the capacitors in the charge controller and the inverter to try and get rid of that ripple. <clears throat> Basically, uh, when we've looked at when this occurs, uh, I have it data logged um, almost every single time. It's on a cloudy day, um, so it's caused by that impulse that I'm talking about before. Basically, when the uh, batteries can no longer handle or try and filter the ripple, uh, it's all down to the capacitors. Uh, when it gets too much for the capacitors to handle, I think that as a last line of defence, the PID controllers are trying to handle it. Um, there's a theorem called Nyquist theorem that basically said if, says if you're modelling um, a signal, then you've got to measure that signal at twice the frequency of the underlying signal. Um, the PID controller is trying to handle it, I just don't think they're fast enough because the ripple is too, too fast and they lose control and that's when you have that large voltage spike when you go way above your set point. Uh, one thing that we have noticed is that when the inverter has been out of, out of the system uh, we get those very very uh, long duration 62.7 volt uh, peaks. Uh, when the inverter's in, I think that its capacitors are helping uh, to reduce this ripple. The inverter on its own, when I've had to send back the charge controllers, seems to do a pretty good job. Uh, I'd assume that's it's probably got a faster PID controller, I don't know. Trying to be constructive here, I'm not trying to riff against MPP Solar, but what can cure it? Okay, well, I have a kettle next to my desk down in my office. And when I see this occurring, when I see a cloud come over, I'm ready for it and I see the voltage climbing up, going over the set point, I hit the kettle there I'm trying to counteract and bring the voltage down and just give the um, PID controller a bit more time to adjust I guess uh, but that's not a long term solution uh, I can't be here all day every day uh, one thing I can't understand why they don't have this if the unit, if the charge controllers are able to show on their display that the batteries are at 62.7 volts the charge controllers know the batteries are at 62.7 volts. There is realizing, relays inside the unit that can turn off the input. Why can't they have a software or hardware interrupt that when it goes above the, so the set point, it shuts the solar off. It might be for 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Then try again. If it goes above it again, shut the solar off again. And maybe three times it, it shuts it off until you intervene. 
It's like an added line of defence. It'd be a really simple thing to do, and I think that with their hardware, just with the firmware update, they should be able to achieve that. Uh, a better thing um, in terms of uh, uh, longevity of the batteries um, would be to add more ripple protection on the, the bus, on the DC bus, in the charge controllers and in the, um, in the inverter. Ripple is extremely bad for batteries. Uh, there's a lot of information on the internet about uh, the effect of ripple current upon the longevity of your batteries and that goes for lithium, AGMs uh, and lead acid. So everybody should be concerned about this, about minimising ripple going through the batteries and definitely MPP Solar's recommendation to use the battery as a capacity to get more batteries, it just doesn't work. It's like putting the, uh, the cart before the horse. They really need to address it, I believe, uh, with design changes. The other thing that you could do is get a much faster PID, uh, and that's probably why the inverter handles it well. Okay, so I hope I've been fast enough and concise enough. Uh, I guess the takeaway point here is I hope that MPP Solar will admit to and, and rectify this problem. Uh, I really would have liked them to have been my solution, but we just haven't been able to work out a solution for this problem. What I think you need to ask yourself, if you're using AGM batteries or even if you're using lithium uh, and you're worried about ripple, just ask yourself how much do the batteries cost versus how much am I going to save on this charge controller? You know, these charge controllers aren't dramatically cheaper uh, than other mainstream charge controllers. So just with this knowledge, just ask yourself that question. Is it worth potentially destroying a battery bank if this happens when you're not there to watch it and see it? Thanks very much for listening. Please like, subscribe, comment if you wish. Really appreciate that. I'd like to hear your comments.